time for some work on the immune system. Now I'm also going to do a little bit then on things like monoclonal antibodies as well, but we'll start off with the immune system first. So let's um, think of a scenario of if someone gets ill. What happens is what gets into their system is a foreign body. Yeah, something that's foreign body. So that has on the outside something that we'll look at in a minute. So imagine I'm ill, so a microorganism gets inside me. Ah, microorganism. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's inside me right now. On the outside of this microorganism, however, are things called antigens. Ah, microorganism. Scary microorganism. What then happens is, is your immune system will recognize these things. Let's change the color. Uh, let's do it as blue. You will have things called white blood cells, and they're usually a bit of a weird shape, yeah? You have WBCs. These things patrol. Yeah? So they patrol around looking for particular um, things that are foreign. Yeah, some of the white blood cells that, that you have in your body are called a special type. The special type are B lymphocytes. So bear that in mind as well. B lymphocytes. Now, let's say if that was a B lymphocyte. If that came across that organism there, what it would do is, is it would produce... Antibodies. Antibodies. And what do those antibodies do? Those antibodies will then attach to that particular microorganism. So if I made some antibodies, what's going to happen is the antibodies are very specific to certain antigens. So that's my antibody. Yep, it detects those unique markers and then your antibodies will then bind on and basically kill the microorganism. Kill microorganism. And it will use things like toxins to do that. Yeah, antibodies are then produced rapidly and then they will basically kill any of these other ones around. The problem is it takes a bit of time to do that. So your B lymphocytes come across the antigen, they produce the antibodies, the antibodies are very specific. They only attach to certain antigens. I've made those antibodies, they will then go around and hunt any other antigens, that are any other microorganisms with those antigens and kill them. Yeah? That's your general gist of how your immune system works. Well then, that's a general response, yeah, but there's an issue. It takes time for that to happen. That's why you get ill, it's because it's the time it takes for your body to be able to respond to that. Now, after you've responded to something, what then happens is, is I'll explain this graph in a minute, but I just want to explain the role of something called memory lymphocytes. Memory lymphocytes. They basically provide you with immunity. Because your first response is very, very slow. It takes a bit of time for you to do that. But after you've responded, these memory lymphocytes will basically remember the, the microorganisms, remember the antigens, and will produce antibodies. Antibodies. I keep spelling antibodies wrong. Produce antibodies rapidly. Really, really fast. That's why, if you look at this graph here, it shows you... After someone's been exposed to the antigen, it takes about 30 or so days for the infection to be cleared. Now, later on, if you ever come across it again, you basically, your concentration of the antibody goes sky high, fast. It's because you already have memory lymphocytes. So why are memory lymphocytes useful is because they basically provide you immunity. If you ever come across that same microorganism, your body has seen it before and it produces the antigens fast which means you don't get ill and it gets rid of the infection or whatever it might be really, really quickly. Okay, now let's look at some of the 
Now, in fact, before I do that, actually, this also relates to what immunization is. I'm not really going to go through that because most people find that okay, but immunization is the same thing. Is that you basically you take an individual, you give that person a dead or an inactive version of a particular disease or a microorganism, and then what then happens is is that they then produce memory lymphocytes. So if you ever come across it again. You are immunized. That's basically what how immunization works. So if you go for an injection, for um, vaccinations, all that's happening is they're giving you a tiny piece of the virus or the bacteria, or a dead version or a slightly different version, but that will still be recognized in the same way. And then if you ever come across it again, you are immune to it. Also remember to learn about Edward Jenner. So learn about the whole cowpox, small smallpox thing. Learn the steps, but again, it is relatively straightforward. I'm going to go through now very quickly because this comes up a lot. Is monoclonal antibodies? Monoclonal antibodies. What does the word monoclonal antibody just mean? It just means identical anti. Bodies, yeah, they're just they're they're identical, identical anti should be bodies really, identical antibodies. Now, antibodies are very useful. Why are antibodies useful is because antibodies are very specific. They only attach to certain um, certain organisms or certain biological things. Only certain certain things. Now, if I want a particular antibody and I want loads of this antibody. How do I make this antibody? Well, what I do is, is so let's say I want an antibody for a particular disease. Yeah, I want to make loads of that antibody. If I have a mile a mouse, and I inject my mouse with that antigen. Oops, I inject it with the antigen. Yeah, I also need something else which I'll look at in a minute. So the mouse will produce the antibodies. Or more specifically, will produce the B lymphocytes that produce those antibodies. Yeah? And those B lymphocytes are going to be fused with something in a minute. I also need a tumor cell. When you fuse those two things together, you get something. So the lymphocytes plus the tumor cell, you get something called a hybridoma. That hybridoma will then divide quickly and produce huge amounts of the antibody. Yeah? Because you're using the principle that tumor cells, a tumor is basically when cells divide rapidly. If you combine a B lymphocyte with a tumor cell, you get a hybridoma. And tumor cells we know divide rapidly. The hybridoma will basically divide rapidly and produce antibodies, the ones that you might need. Okay, so now why might monoclonal antibodies be useful? Well, specific use, first one we'll start with is pregnancy tests. Test, yeah? Now, there is a hormone in the urine that basically only happens, only occurs when a woman is pregnant. So hormone in urine indicates pregnancy. Yeah. Now, what do women do? Is they have a stick, and a stick has two different parts to it. Yeah. It has a little bit where you're meant to pee on and another bit. So we'll start with the peeing bit first. Now, antibodies are stuck to a blue bead or a blue dye. You'll be fine. I'll draw this antibody. Let's make it look a bit nicer. So the antibody is stuck to the blue bead. Okay, now what happens is they will 
P on this section. So there's P here. Over here you also have, I'll add that in as well. Is the test strip that only contains just antibodies. Now this test strip is the bit that actually turns the different color or particularly normally is blue. That's the bit that will change in color. Yep, so you pee here, but that's the bit that changes in color. Okay, so if you are pregnant, what will happen is, so if you're pregnant, you pee on here, the hormone is going to bind to the um, antibodies. So if you are pregnant, the hormone binds to the antibodies on the blue beads. Yep, and then what happens is, is the urine moves up the stick. Up the stick. Carrying the hormone and beads. Then what happens is, is the beads and the hormone basically attach to these antibodies and then what happens is is the is the strip will turn blue bind to antibodies so the beads and the hormone will then go over here and they will bind to the, um, the strip, which will turn the strip blue. If you're not pregnant and you're on the stick, the urine still moves up the stick, carrying the blue bees, but there's nothing, there's nothing to stick to the blue bees, so there's no hormone. So they won't, you won't get, they won't move. So now just be careful here, the bit that people probably get a little bit confused with is those antibodies are stuck. The blue beads, however, aren't stuck. Those antibodies are stuck there. That's just to keep them in that position. And they're also stuck. So when you pee on it, what happens is, is the blue beads alongside the hormone moves over here. And then the blue bead and the hormone attach this antibody, which then makes that whole strip turn blue. Okay, so you pee on it. The, you, the hormone will attach to the bees and the antibodies. The antibodies stay there, but the beads along with the hormone go over here. That turns that bit blue. But if you understand the, the basic principle of how antibodies are specific and they will attach to the hormone, you'll get some marks out of it. So if you just discuss the fact that there is a hormone found in the urine and when a, when a lady pees on the stick, if the hormone is there, the antibodies will attach to the hormone, which makes the stick turn blue. There's a little bit more to it about how it goes from here to here, but if you understand the basics, you can kind of wing some of the rest if you need to. Obviously, preferably, you'd like to be able to get a little bit, be a bit more detailed. Now, the last bit I want to mention in monoclonal antibody, just some of the other uses. So you've got to kill cancer cells, to diagnose cancer. So you've got diagnose and treat. Diagnose and treat. I'm not going to go through this in massive detail because it makes sense. You can use antibodies to diagnose cancer because basically if you have antibodies that are specific to those tumour cells, they will then attach to the tumour cells. Or what you could do is, is if you attach your antibody to a particular drug and then if that antibody is specific for the tumour cells, the drug will go directly to the tumour cells. So do have a good look into how monoclonal antibodies can be used to diagnose cancer and to treat cancer. And a final bit is that it can also be used to treat blood clots. Well, not to treat blood clots, to find blood clots. Yeah, so make sure you understand those two uses of, or the three uses of monoclonal antibodies. It comes up a lot.